Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to beat Baron's TD on the highest difficulty, which is called God Peasant. Now at the start of the game, right after you select your difficulty, it's very important, or my error, uh, it's called Farming God. But yeah, right after you select your difficulty, it's very important that you go and kill a rabbit before you see this pop up. If you kill a rabbit before the pop-up comes up, you can two-shot the rabbit instead of three-shot, which is just a nice little bonus. Because you have to kill three rabbits either way, so getting that extra hit reduction is just really valuable. And mostly just convenient. So, once you've gotten your three rabbits killed, go ahead and find a tree cluster and immediately start gathering wood. You gather wood at a rate of 10 wood per hit, and our objective is going to be to get around 750 wood by the end of the first day. What we're trying to construct is farms. Whenever you create a farm, it will automatically start generating chickens over time. And these chickens can be eaten to level up your peasant. And as your peasant reaches higher levels, you get access to more towers, and most importantly, well, yeah, most importantly, you get access to the tower, and then eventually the wall, and uh, also the smart machine. All these upgrades I'll explain a little bit later on, but for right now we just need to keep gathering wood as quickly as possible. Uh, ideally I would have been able to select this tree here, but this is a really precise hitbox. I managed to get it that time, but yeah. So the first level requires 10 experience, which means two, you have to eat two chickens. The second level is going to require 40, so we probably won't reach level 2 until about the end of the first night. Also, you only get 15 walls, but because I killed some rabbits, they had a random chance to drop either junk towers, scrolls of speed, or scrappy walls, and I happened to get two walls and an extra scroll of speed. It doesn't matter too much, just make sure that you keep in mind how many walls you have access to because you really want to have a full surround on your base before the night falls. And so let's say you pick the base and you're just going really wide and you needed 20 walls and you only have 15, then you'll probably end up dying on the first night. So now's about time to start placing our walls. You want to have your walls placed before the night comes, otherwise you just won't really have time to safely do it. For the first night, I recommend placing your walls in a way that will allow you to have a walking path on the top and also enough room for towers. Now you may have noticed that my base was not able to be fully sealed with 17 walls due to how wide I made it. If I had made it a little bit narrower, I could have fully sealed it, which is fine, but I had actually intentionally not sealed it because our objective at the end of the night is going to be to have gold level 5 upgrade, uh, yeah, gold chance upgrade level 5. And the reason why it's important to not fully seal the wall is because at the end of the night we should be level 2 or 3 with our peasant, which means that we will have splash damage and can take out large amounts of enemies at once, so we just wanted to be able to attack them at the end. And these towers are probably going to die soon enough anyway, so this should time out nicely. We just need to get 200 more wood, and then we'll be good to go. Now our peasant is level 1, not quite high enough. We need a few more chicks to kill so that we can get access to the bloodlust upgrade, er, ability. Okay, with that, we just reached uh, gold chance level 5, which means we can start attacking the enemies. And we also just got three more chickens, which means we can use Bloodlust. So you get splash damage when you play as the Lumberjack, which is what I selected. And Overdrive will give you 35% additional attack speed. So we're able to kill huge quantities of enemies in a relatively low amount of time. And because we got the Gold Chance Level 5 researched in time, there's a chance that these units will drop a gold coin worth 100 gold whenever you kill them. So by killing, let's just say, 50 units here, we just had, how much is that? Six gold coins. Or actually, it looks like it was only five. One of those, or a couple of those were level one gold coins, which aren't worth much. So now that the first night is over, I'm going to switch my minimap over to dark mode, which will help us find the merchant. 
And we also need to research the, well not research, but convert 100, uh, or 5 gold into 100 wood. And by doing that, that allows us to purchase 20 scrappy walls, which we will use to defend ourselves in the next night or two. Yeah, once you have level 5 gold, it's not too important um, to keep upgrading it immediately. We will keep upgrading it later, but for right now, it just really benefits us to put our upgrades into farming, because that'll let us level up more, which gives us access to towers. Actually, it looks like there was a couple more gold coins that dropped, but those were from the tower kills earlier, before we researched gold level 5. Okay, we should have enough chickens to reach level 3. Actually, we're just a hair short. Okay. So because of that, we're just going to seal the base without any towers. Slightly unfortunate, but not too much we can do about that. I'm going to repair this wall. Your peasant's default repair speed is quite high. Uh, he can repair at a rate of... Basically, I think it's a percentage. You repair at 20% per second, I believe. So you can repair anything back to full in 5 seconds. However, these walls are so cheap, we purchase them for 5 wood, that it is generally worthwhile to just let them die and just replace it instead. Okay, so now that we've reached level 3, we are able to start placing these archers. Archers will not have enough damage to kill the units on the first night, but once we reach level 6 and get access to the smart machine, that'll allow us to upgrade the damage, and then it will be more than able to one-shot all the units for about the first five to ten nights. Okay, let's get two more farming upgrades, and... Hmm. Oh, we could go up to farming level ten, or we could start putting it back into gold. Either's fine. Let's activate Bloodlust. Looks like we're able to hit units again. And it looks like we got to level 4 from eating, which means we now get access to cleave level 4. Every time you level up, aside from just getting access to new structures, your, your passive abilities also improve, and sometimes you unlock new ones. So now we have access to blink, overdrive level 4, which gives us 45% attack speed, and cleave level 4, which gives us 32% cleave. As you may have guessed, the cleave, as it levels up, will eventually surpass 100% damage AoE, which will be pretty useful for taking out large amounts of enemies. Of course, by the time we reach that point, we'll mostly just be killing enemies with archers anyway, so it's not too big of a difference. Looks like we got lucky with the merchant spawn, it is right next to our base. I'm going to run out and purchase one more pack of scrappy walls. I'm also going to purchase about 5 cage chickens, because that'll be an easy way to boost our food supply. I ended up purchasing 6 because I wanted to get us up to 50. So now I'm going to destroy my two towers on the left and place 6 lumber mills. Lumber mills do more or less what you'd expect, it generates wood over time. And there's also an upgrade that we can research at the camp, which will increase the likelihood of high quality wood spawning, which means larger clusters, so instead of 10 wood, you get 100 wood. And eventually, there's also a chance for it to be 500 wood. Okay, 100 gold left, nightfall is about to come, let's get some more towers up. I'm going to destroy all my towers on the bottom to make more room for more towers. Basically, we want a single row of towers around the whole base. And yeah, that's why these scrappy walls are important, because they don't require any food to build, and they're also extremely cheap. Okay, looks pretty good. So let's take out the last few remnants of our old layout, and now start placing towers. Towers use one food each, so just keep that in mind. And once we do have all the towers placed, I'm going to type dash eat to kill my chickens and hopefully be level 6, which will allow us to get the smart machine. Looks like I didn't have quite enough population for this, but we should still be more or less fine. Okay, now let's type dash eat. Actually, there's no reason to do that. I was just looking and seeing how much gold I have. Even if we had the smart machine, uh, we really want about 200 gold to make good use of it because that'll give us access 
to the damage upgrades, and with 15 gold, I don't think that's even enough for a single damage upgrade, so there's not much point. So instead, we'll start to AoE attack these enemies, and I also need to get a bonfire up. Let's see if I can make that. The reason why the bonfire is really important is because it's the only source of rapid mana regeneration uh, that's passive. So basically by just standing near the bonfire, we went from 0 mana to 55 in about 10 seconds, and we'll be able to upgrade that more later on. I'm going to relocate my camp here, that just allows me to save 10 gold. Uh, basically that destroys your camp and gives you 10 gold back. Otherwise the camp would have died anyway, and then we would have just lost money. Okay, looks like we got about... What is that? 2,000 gold? Maybe a little less? Also, your towers are able to attack rabbits, but uh, yeah, rabbits only drop lesser gold coins regardless of your gold upgrade. Alright, another fantastic night for the merchant, which means I'm going to buy 20 more scrappy walls. And I also did not have my camp placed, so I just need to quickly place that. I don't think we need any caged chickens this time, but I'll think about Research it. Complete. Okay. Research so, uh, complete. You want caged Research chickens? Complete. I guess we can buy like two. Now nah, we have plenty. Yes, okay. Right. So let's seal this back up, Righto. and then get some more towers. Go, this time, well because done, of the done, food well upgrade done. that I just bought, right we've access to 75 right population, right there, which means we won't be hitting the population well cap again yes, for at least another night or so. Right yes, me lord. Job done. Okay, and with that, our base is more or less complete for as much as we are going to need it to be, uh, which is just to say, um, most of our structures from here on out can be placed outside of the base, so the size of it will not be, we won't have to expand it anymore. Okay. Let's type dash E, gets us to level 7, and then we can place the smart machine. At the smart machine, we're going to quickly get several levels of the bow upgrade, because we really want our towers to take out the enemies in one shot. So they have 34 HP, and we just got 5 upgrades, which brought our unit from, I think, 10 damage to 40. And yeah, that is enough to take them out in one hit, but let's just double check here. Are any of them surviving more than one hit? And that looks like a no. And now after that, we can start getting the Archer Attack Speed upgrade. For it, The Archer Attack Speed upgrade is a little bit different price-wise. It is the same amount of gold and wood, as opposed to primarily being a gold upgrade, which is largely the reason why we do need to invest in lumber mills, so that we can continue upgrading those towers. And yeah, so our towers are now fast instead of average, thanks to those upgrades we just got. And eventually we'll get to the point where towers are much faster. Should be able to get around 30 to 40 tower attack speed upgrades. Yeah, if we had fully sealed the base here it would have been preferable because our towers are strong enough to take out the enemies, but uh, yeah, the scrappy wall just was not quite durable enough. Yeah, and the only downside to that is that means we aren't able to harvest wood, and we are in a little bit of a wood shortage right now. Okay, um, yeah, I'm going to go up to the traveling merchant and purchase a few caged chickens, and let's see how many scrappy walls I have. Yes, my lord. Now here he is. Off I go then. We were a little bit food constrained there, so getting those caged chickens will once again help us out. Okay, seal that. Fully seal the bottom. I'm also going to repair this tower back to full. Odds are if it died last night, it'll probably die again. The walls. Actually, yeah, let's do that instead. That'll give us slightly more space and slightly more damage. Alright. And it looks like uh, I have to replace my camp again. There we go. Also, whenever it rains, it extinguishes your bonfire, and it requires 100 food, uh, 100 wood to get back up. It's 
pretty unlucky. Uh, sometimes you can have a game where there's just no rain ever, and that just is objectively easier than it is if you do get rain. Okay, I'm going to blink back in. And how much space do I have here? Not quite enough to get a second row of towers, but that's not super essential anyway, so that's fine. Now we're going to get our sixth farm up, and then after that, we're going to blink outside the base and start placing some more lumber mills. Yeah, it's just very important to keep in mind that because it's raining, you won't be getting any mana back, so just make sure you don't run out. Okay, units have 43 health, we're doing... 43 damage, that's not quite enough, so let's get two upgrades. And the reason why that's not enough is all enemies have medium armor, which takes reduced damage from piercing. Okay, let's start using these health potions that I've picked up. You know, 100 health per potion, should be enough to keep us alive. Okay, let's start getting some more levels in gold. Even though we have a fair amount of gold right now, more definitely can't hurt. Actually, before we do that, we'll get farming up to level 10. Nice, a greater bundle of lumber just spawned. That'll be worth 500 wood. Also, if you guys are liking this video, consider liking and subscribing. That'll help promote the video and the channel. Okay, that's daybreak, which means it's safe to go out and collect all that gold. This will probably be the last night where we end up having to collect gold, or we're definitely close to the point where we no longer need to. There's an, a structure that we can make called the wood sucker and the gold sucker, which will automatically pick up all of these lumber drops and gold drops, which is quite useful because it does take quite a while to pick them up. Okay, let's drop some of these spare items here. And move them all to the right. Off I go then. Right all right. Okay. A lot of those ended up being stackable, so we didn't have to do quite as much micro management as I was expecting. Now let's get a couple more towers up. Okay. Looks like we are slightly short on wood. Er, yeah. To get access to the gold sucker, you need 10 levels of gold chance upgrades. Also, let's blink out and place more lumber mills, as I had mentioned earlier. We really need more wood right now, so we can just fill out the rest of our supply with it. And once we get 750 wood, we'll get another supply increase. Also, just rebuilt my bonfire. Pretty expensive, but definitely worth it. I might go up to level 2 now as well. Also, whenever you see an obese chicken, that means it's safe to eat it, or you could sell it if you're really low on gold somehow. I guess this wall must have been low on HP. That's fine. That's uh, double layered. Okay, let's head over here and pick up our large quantity of wood. Now let's get uh, another level of chickens, and two more levels of gold, or three. Okay, with that we're now at gold level 10, which means greater gold coins can drop now, and just gold coins should drop at a higher rate in general. So it looks like we need 400 more wood, and uh, actually yeah. So we're going to need about a thousand plus wood before we can get the gold sucker, because we're supply capped. 51, yeah, we need a couple more damage upgrades. And in a couple nights, we're going to replace these scrappy walls with uh, more durable walls, but for right now, we don't have the spare supply. Yeah, and if you can ever fight at the bonfire, that'll also usually be enough health regen to keep you at near full HP, so that works out nicely as well. Oh yeah, one other thing I didn't explain. 
is that your archers, whenever they kill an enemy, they have a chance to upgrade into a superior archer. The superior archers get access to multi-shot. So you have green, which attacks two enemies at once, and then you have red, which can attack three. And at that point, your archer is maxed out. Inventory is right All right. Inventory is Yes, my lord. Right Okay. Yes, my lord. So let's get that supply upgrade. Oh, we only need 500 wood. I was thinking of the next level. All right. Right and then we can place the gold sucker. All right. Yes, my lord. All right. It looks like we have several obese chickens. Oh, actually, you know what? I had forgotten to upgrade my farms. We had enough gold to do this for a while, so that was just a pure error on my part. Once you have your, uh, once you have enough spare gold to spend 600 on upgrading your farms, you should do so because sheep will provide more EXP or gold if that's what you want. Upgrade complete. Yeah, and I think they spawn at the same rate, so it's pretty much just a better farm. Upgrade complete. Inventory is full. Off I go then. Okay, let's drop some of these random items. All right. Job done. Yes, my lord. Okay, we've resealed the base, and now we can place. Actually, it looks like we need 100 more wood. There are 200. Okay, we now have the gold sucker up, which means instead of. Uh, Regular gold coins dropping, it'll just go straight to our gold total. Yeah, so we just got 100 gold there. And we do have enough spare gold to do that with the wood sucker, so I'll just have to decide where I want to place it. Uh, we could... Hmm. Just thinking we could replace the smart machine, but that's probably not the best choice. Alright, we'll displace the wood sucker over here on the left. That should be fine. Because we will be expanding left soon enough. Okay. Wait a minute, what just happened? Oh, there must have been a chick there or something? Yeah, for some reason uh, it just got interrupted. I didn't even see an interruptible object. Okay, yeah. We should also max out our woodcutting upgrade. We've had the money to do that for a while. Goes up to level 20, and I think in total it costs like 2,000 gold to max out, so yeah, we really should have completed that earlier. Um, yeah. And it looks like these out, outer uh, lumber mills need a little bit of repairing. The enemies will attack your lumber mills until they get aggroed by an archer, so that can sometimes result in the lumber mills getting hit once or twice. Okay, let's get another food supply upgrade, and then place more lumber mills on the outside. And then we'll place some real walls here, and that should significantly boost the durability of the top right corner, which has died like three times. And once level 10 comes, these trees will probably end up getting destroyed, so just be prepared to repair your... or just expand your walls when that happens. Off I go then. Okay. All looks good. Done. Job's done. Job's done. Yes, me lord. Right -o. Job's done. Job's done. And we can just use our manual target heal for that. Okay. Let's get a few levels of building health. Probably three should be sufficient for the moment. Then we can get a couple more levels of farming, and then significantly more levels of gold. Yeah, like the next couple thousand wood will just all be invested into gold upgrades. I'm going to stoke the fire though, uh, because that was still a low level and I wanted a little more HP regen. Now let's blink to the left, heal these walls, and then that should be good.
So as far as structures go, at level 10, I believe we have access to every single structure. So levels at this point are purely for making our peasant more durable, as opposed to unlocking new buildings. Enemies have 68 health, and we're doing 75 damage, so we'll get one more damage upgrade, and that should be sufficient. Let's get a... Uh, actually, let's get a food upgrade. Place a few more lumber mills. Hmm. Let's place these two out, because I'm planning to expand this wall. And yeah, the uh, wood suction range and the gold suction range is massive, so pretty much all of, yeah, all of this is within the suction range, so you don't have to worry about building your lumber mills extremely close or anything. Okay, let's get some real walls up at the top right, or top left. And there we go. And the biggest benefit to having real walls is this upgrade, which improves their HP by 100. And it also increases the HP of your lumber mills by 25, which is just a nice little secondary bonus. Okay, we now have enough spare resources that we can start buying additional anks. Having about 10 anks by the end of the game is just a really nice safety net. But uh, realistically, you probably won't end up dying anyway, so it's just nice to have. All right. And aside from that, yes, I guess we can also buy a Ring of Evasion. That'll give us a nice minor durability boost. Off I go, then. Right okay, 141. Let's get another Reset couple levels in gold. The max right. level of gold is 20, so we're All still right. around... 10,000, probably like 5,000 wood to go. Off I go then. Yes, me lord. Right All right. And, all right, we can start Off double layering then. the uh, lumber mills on the bottom. I don't recommend doing more than two out, because then you just run the risk of them dying. Right Away. Also, once enough animals spawn, the game will just automatically kill a ton of them for you, so you don't need to worry too much about overpopulation with animals. Actually, thinking of animals, though, we really should get another layer of farms up, so I'm going to make four more farms. Once the farms cost 600, that's where I'll stop. Yeah. Now let's quickly upgrade all of these into the superior mill. That'll probably do the trick for farms. I don't think I'll be making any more. Yeah, so the game just automatically killed 43 chickens, which brought us from, I think it was level 10 to level 14? No, level 12. And yeah, now that we're exclusively generating sheep, that'll be even more EXP. The obese chicken only gives you 50 EXP, whereas the obese sheep will give you 250. And actually, one of the big advantages of having the lumber mills on the outside is that'll redirect the enemies to the same spots, which means you can focus on upgrading fewer walls. Let's go get that uh, greater bundle of lumber. It gets us up to gold level 16. And I believe the final levels of gold I'm not positive, it either just increases the amount of gold that drops in general, or increases the likelihood of greater gold dropping. Either way, it's solid. Greater gold is, of course, slightly inconvenient, but I'd still rather have the gold than not have it. Off I go, then. Good spawn for the merchant, so I'll go ahead and buy another ink. And I'm not sure if it stacks, but just in case it does, I'm going to purchase an extra ring of evasion, which will go, possibly then. bring us up to 40% dodge. Yes, me lord. Research complete. All right. Looks like we also need to get more food upgrades. Right 
job's done. All right. upgrade complete. Uh, we, we have a... I was going to say we have the time yes, to Lord. expand this wall, but uh, because my f food supply right is so constrained right now, we can't All actually right. do that. Well, we could use scrappy walls right to expand, there. I suppose, but then yes, we wouldn't Lord. have the food supply to put archers in it, Innocent so we'll just wait one more night. Then. All right. Off I go then. Hmm, do we want another level of the fire? It's a little pricey. Rather have the food upgrade. Research complete. Oh, and it's round 10 now, which means the boss units are spawning. And Research there's also a chance complete. for these trees to get destroyed, which is why it's extra important Research to keep complete. my survivor over here on the right. Research complete. Research complete. Okay, just got a significant damage boost on my towers, bringing it up to 120, which is not enough to take out these mega baddies, but it is enough to kill them pretty quickly. And if we're in an extreme pinch, we can always use the invulnerability spell on my builder, which will make pretty much every single structure here invulnerable. Uh, but yeah, just, we're not likely to end up needing that. The first night... Uh, the first boss night is only, I think, 90 or 100 seconds. Eventually, the round 30 boss night will actually require... You'll have to survive it for 300 seconds, which isn't actually that hard, but it is just a long time to wait. Very important to keep the uh, level 3 archers alive. And it looks like we got a little bit of wood here, so I'm going to get more archer training upgrades. The archer training and bow upgrades complement themselves nicely, so it's good to get them both and pretty much evenly distribute your money between them. Oh yeah, the archer upgrade also increases the range of the towers, so now they're up to 900 from their base of, I think, 400? And just as a good measure, generally if you can survive level 10, you're usually on the right track to survive for the whole game. Looks like one single lumber mill that was farther out ended up dying. Not bad. Okay, there we go. So that takes out the first boss wave, and whenever you finish a boss wave, which is every 10 levels, you get an extra long day. So this day is 2 minutes yes, instead of the usual whatever it is usually. I think it's 1 minute. It looks like the merchant's in a terrible place, so we'll just wait for buying a new ank. And yeah, the extra anks are extremely optional. We haven't died a single time, and we probably aren't going to. Okay, let's take out all of these walls. And, uh, yeah, move these out just a little bit. Put these rings of evasion a little bit lower so they're easy to identify. Yeah, there's a lot of really useless items in this game. Like, this armor provides three armor, which is like a 10% damage reduction. It's just not even noticeable. If we're lucky, we'll end up getting legendary armor drops, which will actually be a little useful. The legendary drops can provide you with... 10 armor, I believe, Job's done. along with 25 Job's damage. Done. Job's done. Yes, me Job's lord. Done. Off I go then. Okay, we now Job's fill done. out this space with towers, and then we're pretty much done expanding. Job's done. Right Job's done. All right. Job's done. Job's done. Job's done. Job's Just got a few more levels there. Okay, let's get another food upgrade and then head up to the top right to reseal the wall. Yeah, eventually you will want every single wall to be a upgraded wall, just because the scrappy walls at this point will die in like one hit. Let's see if we're able to build a tower here. Yeah. Job's done. All right. It looks like no meteors ended up striking the trees, so we still have them all there. It's actually a little inconvenient because the extra space would have been nice. Right. Yes, me lord. Off I go then. Job done. Yes, me lord. Okay. Our town is under siege. 
Get a few more lumber mills up. Oh yeah, and we can pick up our rings of evasion now. So enemies currently have 196 health, and we are dealing 138 damage, which means they're all two-shottable. And for the rest of the game, that's pretty much going to be our objective. Keep the enemies within the two-shot range. And the reason why that's our objective is simply because getting enough damage upgrades on the towers to be in the one-shot range is simply impossible because the upgrade for damage increases by 50 gold every time you get it, and you still only get 5 damage per upgrade, which just means to have enough damage, you just need tens of thousands of gold, which we will end up getting, but uh, yeah, we just won't have enough surplus for that to be possible. But speaking of gold, let's uh, finish the gold chance upgrade and blink back in the base since it looks like my survivor almost died. I guess we can start using these potions of healing. They're not that helpful because they have a long cooldown and only restore 100 HP, but we could end up selling them if we wanted to to get a small amount of gold. Yeah, the most important walls to upgrade are the corner walls because those end up t uh, attracting the most units. Looks like it's time to use my healing ability again. Because we essentially have infinite mana, it's best just to use that whenever possible. Okay, and let's go buy another ink. Off I go then. Righto. All right. Okay, that looks like an obese sheep, so we can go ahead and manually kill those, which brought us up to level 15. Yes, me lord. Yes, me lord. All right. Hmm. I think we had four farms here earlier. But maybe not, since uh, the farm does cost 600, whereas I recall it being 300 last time. I can't build there. Off I go then. Job's done. Right. Upgrade complete. Okay. So now we'll get a few more wall upgrades, bringing it to 950 HP for the base wall and 1200 HP for the upgraded wall. We can also start to place uh, healers on the outside of our base as well, which is once again a useful way to funnel the enemies to specific targets and to heal your walls. So we'll put a healer right here. Job done. Right Inventory is full. Yes, me lord. And then we'll need to get uh, a uh, healer upgrade so that they actually restore a relevant amount. Their base upgrade just about restores nothing. I think it's like 50 HP. But every single time you upgrade it, it boosts the health restored by 20. So it quickly gets to the point where it's actually useful. Probably get uh, maybe three more upgrades of healing. You don't want to put too much into it because you do get diminishing returns. You do want to end it on an even upgrade though, because the amount of targets restored improves by one for every two levels. Alright, let's get a couple more bow damage upgrades, and then once we get some more gold we'll follow it up with archer training. We have enough wood now that it is a good time to start maxing out that archer training. And by maxing out, I just mean getting like 10 levels of it. I don't actually know what any of the limits are. Like, I don't know if there's 50 upgrades in total, or if there's 100. However, in theory, I think there should be a limit at some point, but we're not going to reach it. Okay, start getting those archer training. And our archers are noticeably faster now than they were at the start of the game, and their range is pretty much enough to strike any unit at the base. The archer on the far left is able to hit units on the far right. And their range is now up to 1450, and the attack speed is very fast instead of just fast. Yes, my lord. Right. Looks like uh, one lesser gold coin dropped. Must have been from a rabbit. Eventually we will want to get the soldier upgrade, it's just an yes, easy way to do a little bit of damage to the attacking units. 
You alternatively can go for the other wall type, but uh, go, yeah, I'm a fan of the soldier. Off I go, also, somewhat soonish, I'll be taking out these two lumber mills and replacing it with a armor AOE tower, or building, because that will provide armor to every single unit within our base, assuming I place it properly. Oh, <laughs> looks like I forgot to upgrade one of my farms. That explains why we still have so many sheep, or chickens, I mean. All right. Let's get some more chicken upgrades. And then we'll, once we get chickens Research to level 20, complete. we're going to get a, another food upgrade. Yes, right and it looks like all of my structures are back up to full HP now. All right. There's also some basic stats over here. Looks like we have killed 5,500 units. We currently have 1,000 gold, 2,000 wood, and our peasants is level 17, which can also be observed right here with your armor level. Okay, 230. Yeah, there's no way we can get enough to one-shot that right now. Yeah, and the uh, AoE armor tower is going to be really useful because that'll boost the damage reduction from about 11% to, depending on how many upgrades we get, somewhere in the ballpark of 60% damage reduction. Let's get a few more mana well upgrades. Not super essential for healing towers, but you'll need a ton of mana upgrades if you want to sustain a defensive aura. It takes around 30 mana well upgrades per defense tower. Thankfully, we only need one, or possibly two, if we just can't get the perfect spot. Rare item. Potion of Greater Healing. That seems unlikely. But, the uh, Greater Mana Bonus will combine with our Ring of Evasion, converting it into plus 10 damage, plus 50 mana, and then still plus 20% evasion. So, not too significant, but... If you're using a slot for evasion, might as well get some minor bonuses as well. So hopefully we can find one more greater mana as well. Okay, 4300 gold and 5600 wood. Also, we just had a flame blade drop. Which, if we get the secondary item to combine it into the Kodo Mask, that'll be a great defensive item, giving us 10 armor, some HP, and 25 damage. Okay, let's get a few Research more levels of complete. building health. We want to get that up to 13. Research complete. Research complete. It looks like we uh, still need the food upgrade as well, so I'll save up. Yes, me lord. Right yeah, I guess we can pick up the flame blade. Off I go then. Yes, me lord. All right. Righto. Off I go then. Okay, eighteen hundred. There we go. So that boosts our food by another twenty-five. Upgrade. And then. Off I go then. Yeah. So now is a good time to replace these interior. Let's see. Yeah. You can get rid of these two interior lumber mills and re then replace that with the defensive aura. So we can move these two right here, and then teleport in. So we'll put the defensive paladin in the middle, and then put the mana well right on top of it. And this mana well on the bottom might be able to uh, give the defensive paladin mana, which if it is, that should make it a little bit cheaper to sustain, but if not, it's fine. Yeah, so let's get some defense aura upgrades. It increases by price 75 per level, and you get one additional armor on the aura every time you upgrade it. So for right now, I'm going to try to get it up to 15. Looks like I already got it to 16, so that's a reasonable stopping point for now. We can spend another few thousand to boost that to 20. But yeah, so that's brought our wall up from, I think it was 10% damage reduction to 50. Which is just really useful for keeping the walls alive. 
So now we're going to put up a few more healing outposts around the base. Assuming you have the food supply for it, we are at the maximum amount of 225, meaning there are no more food upgrades remaining. Uh, yeah. So if you have spare food, just convert it into these little uh, miniature healing outposts. I think one mana well is enough for like, easily three or four healers. They usually don't go off that often because their cooldown is so long. Yeah, and for, so from here, we can spend spare wood on farming upgrades, which will help us level up our peasant, or we can just use that spare wood to boost our wall HP or tower attack speed, which is why you still want to have tons of lumber mills. Yes, my lord. But yeah, if you are in a pinch and you want to just get up a bunch of healers or whatever you're trying to do, having a uh, killing a lumber mill or two will free up some food supply pretty quickly. Yes, my lord. Off I go then. So Bye let's purchase one ink every night from here on out until we reach ten. Off I go then. Honestly, even ten is pretty excessive, <laughs> but yeah, that will give us. What would that be? Right I think there. you take five seconds to revive, so that would give us fifty seconds of safety. Yes, me lord. Then again, that will waste another twenty five hundred gold. I'll think about it. Okay. Let's get a couple more levels of defense aura. And then we just need to get a, a lot of levels of mana. Research complete. Research complete. Alternatively, you could just make Research a second complete. mana well. However, Research if one complete. mana well isn't sufficient, yes, adding two doesn't help as much as you might think, because the mana well is ten mana to restore one, so that would just result in two being drained pretty quickly. Also, it looks like there's some greater gold coins. Let me go ahead and pick those up. All right. Off I go then. Inventory is full. Right Our town is under field. Also, I saw a rare item drop earlier. Let's take a look and see if it happened to be a greater mana bonus. Doesn't seem to be the case. Unfortunately, rare items are just uh, regarded as regular gold chests, so it's pretty hard to distinguish them from the rest. Yeah, there's a regular mana bonus, but I don't think that's upgradable. Yeah, well, it is upgradable, but uh, it does not turn into a greater mana bonus. It just becomes a wizard staff, which I think is 50 mana and 10 damage. Nothing too helpful. Okay, let's build a couple more healers over here. I wonder if we, how many could we get away with? For fun, let's just build uh, seven. You're going to blink back inside. Took a lot of damage there. Before your builder has armor, uh, and I unfortunately haven't found any of the useful armor items. He just uh, takes a beating. In some games, I've ended up getting pretty lucky with the items, and I've gotten up to like 70% damage reduction. But for this one, we'll just have 26 percent for now. I think once our builder is level 30, I think the base becomes 10 armor, which is okay, but nothing amazing. Also, we now have the building health level 13, which means we can now get soldiers. Soldiers do a very small amount of damage. They have a decent amount of base armor and a solid amount of health as well. All right. Yes, my lord. And then the soldier can eventually be upgraded into the knight, which once again is slightly stronger. All right. Off I go then. Right Greater attack speed bonuses can be combined with the lightning claws to turn into rogue armor, which right or no, actually it turns into dragon armor, which is three armor, fifteen damage, and one hundred fifty HP. Off I go then. All right. Inventory is full. Yes, me lord. I think you can combine the shield with the oh, life ring then. as well. Right yeah, there we go. Holy shield, 50 life, 8 damage. Right. <laughs> not, not too helpful, but yeah. Yes, me lord. Upgrade complete. complete. Upgrade complete. Upgrade hmm. complete. Actually, we can just leave this with one soldier there for now. Let's get another oh, healing well then. combo up. Inventory is full. All right. Inventory is yes, full. Guess I might as well use this greater healing yes, potion while it's in my inventory. Right. 
Okay, it looks like I just had an automatic sheep calling, which has now reduced my population to the point where I can't make anything more for now. And I just manually killed the obese sheep. Yeah, so it does seem like one mana well can pretty easily handle seven healers uh, with how many mana upgrades we have. Okay, tower attack speed's now up to level 30, bringing our towers to 1800 range, and however much additional attack speed that results in for attacks per second. I tell you, we're probably at like 1.75 attacks per second right now, maybe two. I guess we can uh, use my heal ability on myself to get up to full HP more quickly. And we will start needing uh, need to pour more gold into the archer damage upgrades. We'll need to finish the game with around 300 damage, which will allow us to 5-shot the final enemies, which is not great. But it is better than 8 shots or worse if we don't get up to 300. Okay, let's see how much... We shall okay, 15 armor. Yeah, we'll get 5 more levels of defense aura, bring that up to 20. And we still need more levels of mana well. Your move. Off I go then. Let's go purchase Riker. some caged chickens Riker. so that I can start making Off more healers then. again. All right. Looks like we need yes, about five. Okay, that should do yes, the trick. I guess we'll pull them up to the walls. Off I go then. Inventory is full. All right. Okay. Let's place a few more right healers here. and move these greater potions yes, of healing. Lord. Right here. Job's Off done. I go then. Job's done. Job's done. Right. I can't build there. Yes, me lord. I can't build there. Job's done. All right. And then we'll put our final batch of mana well healing combos over here on the right. Off I go then. Uh, yeah, we'll put it here. Inventory is full. Our Off town I go is then. under siege. Job's done. All right. Job's done. Yes, me lord. Actually, we need one at the bottom right as well. Right here. Job's done. Inventory right is full. Rear item? It is a advanced armor. That's not what we're hoping for. We need the legendary armor. Yeah, we'll get rid of these uh, two spare healers. Five is more than enough. It looks like we'll need to take out a lumber mill. Uh, I guess this is fine. We can get rid of this one. And with that, we'll need to take out about one more lumber mill in the whole game, optionally. I say optionally because it's just if we want to get a second mana well here instead of putting another 10 levels into mana well upgrade. Eh, I think I'd rather have the mana well upgrades, to be honest. Research complete. Research complete. Okay, level 29. Let's see if that's enough. I think 30 is the breakpoint. I am here. Yeah, so basically, if he stays at 10 mana without the mana well running out, and that means it's sufficient. Off I go then. All right. Yes, me lord. Yeah, actually I think uh, level 29 does appear to be enough, which means we can start putting right. our money back into tower damage upgrades. Research complete. More gold is required. 
off I go then. 8,000 wood. Yeah, we can put that into Research building health complete. upgrade. Research we need to get that complete. up to level 20 for the Research access to the complete. night. You alternatively could go for the regenerator, which is pretty solid as well. That gives 10 HP per second and high defense. However, I'd rather have the damage since we have healers to restore the health. Plus, 10 HP really is not noticeable. Like, that's slightly convenient during the day, but in terms of actual nighttime combat, an extra 500 HP, or an extra 10 HP per second is nothing relative to the 50 damage they're doing. So the pigs currently have 400, which means we are a little behind on the damage upgrades. We need to get that up to 200-ish. Let's go and pick up the gold coins. I think all five of these healers just triggered on the same building. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to prevent that. The healing is just forced auto-cast. But then again, you wouldn't really want to manually cast it anyway, since we have so many. I guess we can max out the Stoke Fire now. Yeah, the max level is 5, which brings it up to 12 HP per second and 4% mana. The 4% man mana is really solid. The 12 HP, since we have 1500 HP, is pretty bad. It means it's taking around 130-ish seconds to go from 1 HP to full. I feel like that should be just 10% HP per second. But, yeah. Yes, me love. Or if not 10, maybe... F yeah, if they could just do 5%, then it'd take uh, 20 yes, seconds. Off I go, then. Which is pretty lengthy. All right. yes, me lord. Yeah, let's go buy another ink. Right All right. Research complete. Off I, go, then. I guess I could also buy the lightning claws to show off the dragon armor. Inventory is full. All right. Yes, me lord. And most of the items sell for just about nothing. This legendary flame blade oh, only sells for then. 50, which isn't even... Right that's cheaper then. than the lightning claws. Oh, okay. And here is yes, the dragon lord. armor. 150 life, 15 HP, 3 armor. Right Unfortunately, All yeah. right. Just the sources of armor right. for the builder are just completely RNG. Yes, Hopefully we'll get them. Off I go then. Alright. So, actually we're still one level away from the next boss. But yeah, hopefully this next boss will take out all these trees. I guess if not, we can just start uh, gathering that ourselves. Okay. Yeah, and at this point, there's not really any ways to boost your gold income, aside from just selling your obese sheep. A obese sheep can be sold for 250 gold, which is pretty solid. Which is actually one of the big benefits to upgrading your farm. I guess we can get this up to level 35. Yeah, the more obese sheep we have, the more gold we get. This, uh, I think this is open now. Yeah. Um, let's see. If this. Okay, yeah. The <laughs> soldiers were confusing me a little bit there. I'm like, oh, I guess I have soldiers there, but yeah, the soldiers are the wall. I guess a couple of my uh, sheep on the outside must have died. Need two more before I can build more structures. Okay, the 
question is, do we want... Yeah, I guess we might as well put the walls slightly farther out here, just so that we can squeeze in two more towers. Yes, my lord. Uh, but the tree is in the way. Okay. I guess for this night specifically, we can just disregard that. Let's get these to the middle level. I think that should be sufficient. Because I don't have many towers here, I doubt that this spot will be very aggroed. Yeah. Levels aren't too essential at this point, so I guess we could just start selling all the obese sheep. Yes, my lord. All right. Point the way. Research complete. Okay, the towers are up to 215, so we've boosted their strength by about 25%. It's not bad in one or two nights. One nice thing about placing your bonfire near the mills is that uh, for the demon knights, it will get your sheeps back up to full HP pretty quickly. And yeah, if you're concerned about your walls dying, you can always use your invulnerability. However, I have found that it feels like whenever you use invulnerability, the game instantly drops a meteor on you, disabling it. But yeah, I don't think we're at any risk anyway. Are, have our walls taken any damage? Yeah, not really. And that's the power of having 20 healers. Okay, let's sell some OB sheep. I will consume one because I was just about to level up, but yeah. Let's get a couple more damage upgrades. Let's also take a look and see how much health they have. They are at 662, which means right now we don't quite three shot them. Which, yeah, it's precisely why you usually want a few more damage upgrades by this point, or it's still just fine. And that's actually the biggest benefit to getting the master level archers, because hitting three targets at once instead of one, well, yeah, obviously it triples the damage output, since there's almost always going to be more than three units attacking. I just wish there was a non-random chance way to get the level three archer. For example, say, 150 gold per upgrade. Which in the early game would be quite expensive, but at the end of the game, that'd just be a nice way to get some better archers. Because uh, a single archer frequently ends up attacking a target that's already dead. Because we have like 25 arrows flying here before they switch targets, which means like 30% of them are doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, it looks like a couple of these trees got destroyed. There's still 25 seconds for it to hopefully take out the rest. I guess we can use a heal again, get those sheep back up to full HP. Okay, easy boss, and now we have a two-minute intermission. Let's go ahead and pick up all of our greater gold coins. A lot of advanced armors, which means if we want to, we can get more dragon armors. Yes, my lord. Or wait, no, those have no relevance for dragon armor. Uh, but we do have greater damage bonus. Uh, no, we want greater attack speed. Actually, I don't think we can get any more dragon armors. Off I go then. All right. Right -o. Off I go then. Okay. Yes, uh, Lord. twelve thousand gold. Let's do. We need more archer training. It's pretty cheap relative to the other upgrades. All right, let's get that uh, armor up complete. to level twenty. Then get Research one more level complete. of mana. And then, yeah. so right now it is at 19, so one more armor. Research Could get a couple complete. more healing upgrade levels if we want. And right now it is restoring 360 HP, which honestly isn't that much. Alright, we'll get more healing upgrade levels. Research complete. And since Research we have a surplus complete. of wood, we'll get a lot more Research farming complete. upgrades as well. Research complete. 
Research complete. Research complete. Research complete. Okay, nice. Research Farming complete. is now up to level 45, which hopefully means we'll get obese sheep very quickly. Oops, I accidentally just sold a fat sheep there. Hmm, I guess we could build more farms. I mean, there's nothing preventing us from doing so. Yeah, I guess next time we get another 10,000 wood or something, we'll also place a few farms down. Okay, yeah, 689. We do have so many towers attacking. Uh, healing, attack speed, or damage. We'll do healing. Our goal here is going to get our heal up to about 600 HP, which still isn't a ton since the towers will, or the uh, walls will eventually have 3,000 HP. But uh, yeah, 600 will mean if all five go off at once, we can bring the wall back up to full. Which is, since we have five healers, that is the ideal ratio. Yeah, I don't think the chain can hit the same building twice, but if it could, that'd be really nice. And also just something kind of fun to think about, is just imagine how many gold coins we would have had to pick up this game if the gold sucker did not exist. I'd tell you it's probably somewhere in the realm of... Well, let's see, we're getting about... 3,000 gold a night, that's 30 gold coins. Actually, we're getting more than that. So probably 100 gold coins a night. So this has saved us from picking up about... It's been 20 nights. We've had it for like 13. So it saved us from picking up 13,000 gold coins. Or no, 1,300 gold coins. I don't know why I said 13,000. But yeah. Take a look. See if we have any items. The one we're specifically looking for is pretty easily identifiable, which is the legendary armor. Instead of having a fancy red box, it'll just have a kind of yellowish gold tint, but I do not see that. Okay, 4,900. This uh, mana well is still very close to running out of mana sometimes. Might still need one or two more levels. Research complete. Yeah, and that brings the mana well up to a base of 210 mana. Okay. Buildings are now at level 20, which means we can get a few more knights. Or rather, we just now have access to the knights. The knight has an additional 250 HP, an additional 6 damage, and an additional 2 armor. Actually, you know what? Something that I'd like to compare is the durability of the knight relative to the ultra sturdy wall so i'll get one of these as well Upgrade complete. so the knight has yes, one additional base armor and a lot of damage yeah so unless you're really tight on the budget there's no reason to get ultra sturdy walls over the knight yes, they're just objectively worse aside from cost And they take up a lot of visual space, which just considering how cluttered this game already is, is actually a bit of a downside. Okay, looks like we have a lot of obese sheep to sell. Be nice if there was an automatic obese sheep seller. Brings us up to 8,000, which we can... Yeah, we'll get a few more healing upgrades. I think we'll stop at level 30. Er... There we go. So that's 616 targets. It's just a good stopping point. And then we'll start putting it back into damage again. More. Hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead and make those additional farms, which... Actually, is that even worthwhile? If we make the additional farms, I'm just thinking here, it seems like some of our sheep on the outside are dying, so I don't know if that'll actually be of much benefit. We, we could replace these interior lumber mills with farms. Alright, here's what we'll do. 
At a minimum, we definitely have space to squeeze in a farm right here. And the same will of course apply to the top. So that gets us an additional two farms. Oh wait, how did my... Am I able to have two bonfires at once? Upgrade I just figured out a little bit of cheese here. On your mark. <laughs> no, I didn't. So it looks like if you build a bonfire... You know what, I don't really care enough to figure that out. But it's possible you might be able to have two. We'll experiment more with that in a couple minutes. Uh, but for right now, I'd like to get the extra farm. Which brings the cost of the farm... Actually, it's still only 600. Yeah, let's build a couple of farms on the right. Yes, me lord. Right oh. Job's done. All right. Job's done. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. Yeah, as long as the farms are only 600, that's fine. I don't want to get one if it's uh, 900 wood, though. Upgrade complete. All right. Job's done. Upgrade. Does it ever reach 900? I was just kind of assuming it'd go up in price again. Okay, well, that's more than enough farms, so I'm not going to make any more. Just spent a few, what would that be, like 3,000 plus wood? Rare item. It is... who knows, something dropped. And once you reach round 25, the uh, shopkeeper will disappear. So if you don't have your inks by now, it's just uh, something to keep in mind. we we'll get more attack speed upgrades and get that up to, say, level 40, and then we'll start putting it back into damage. Or, we don't really need more attack speed if this is able to attack the far right units. Which it is not, so we do want some more attack speed and range upgrades. Yeah, I believe the legendary armor is a legendary drop, so we just have to keep an eye out for the legendary item text. And yeah, so the mana well finally does have enough mana that it is gradually gaining instead of decreasing. And it is, uh, the storm is gone, so we can just go ahead and rebuild the bonfire. It looks like we have a ton of gold coins to pick up. Inventory is full. All right. All right. Yes, me lord. Off I go, then. Righto. Inventory is full. All right. Okay, 5,600 wood. Should be just about enough to Research get another... Complete. I don't think that'll Research be enough to get complete. us to 40, but it'll get us close. Research complete. Do we want to boost the armor aura up to 25? Also, it looks like our rightermost walls... Yeah, specifically these three are outside of the range of the aura. However, it doesn't seem to have been a problem, so I guess that's fine. I don't really want to spend the five food there, or actually seven food that would be needed to get another armor aura up, so we'll just leave it as is. The only other way to fix that would be if we got rid of these two mills and shifted these one to the right, which I mean, I guess we could do. It wouldn't be that difficult. Take like 30 seconds. Let's just get a sense of the range here. Yeah, one, once one of these finishes their wood, I'll see uh, if they are in the armor range. If they are, then that means we can safely shift this one to the right. If they aren't... Okay, they are. Yeah, so if we shift this one to the right, that'll hit every single wall. 
yeah, every wall perfectly. Up to 250 damage, which means it takes four arrows to kill one of these units. There is another tower that you can get uh, called the Demolisher, which will take an additional food, making the tower use up two instead of one. But I'm not too big of a fan of the Demolisher, because I find the Master Archers are more than enough to actually take out the enemies. Plus, the Demolisher requires mana wells to be powered, which is just a pretty inconvenient, because then you're going from two food for the tower, and then it, yeah, so one food versus four per tower, assuming you need one mana well per tower, which we'd have to test. I'm not positive on that. Yes, me lord. Inventory is full. Off I go then. Okay, let's go ahead and destroy these four structures. I am here. Yes, me lord. Inventory is full. Oh, there we go. We got the legendary armor, which means we've gotten our first Kodo mask. Mask of the Kodo gives you yeah, 10 armor, 300 life, 25 damage. So just a really solid durability item. Unfortunately, yeah, there's nothing we can do to guarantee that. And in all likelihood, that'll probably be the only time we get it in the game. Okay, let's blink in. Destroy this mill. Destroy this mill. And I guess destroy the mana well. And then put up a new farm. Okay, and with that, these are now... <laughs> okay, this one's still not in range, but it does get this unit covered in armor. And the ones on the... Actually, you know what? That might have just been a little bit worse overall. Yeah, looking at the armor aura right now... Oh, wait a minute. Why was that ar Why was that knight... Why did it randomly lose the aura? Oh, I just clicked the wrong one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like the bottom left knight, the top left knight, and the bottom right don't have the aura. So this is in fact just objectively worse. Now three of our corners lack the aura instead of one. Just... Yeah, I guess this must be some type of... I guess it's a circle for the aura range instead of a square. So it must just be right like that. I don't think upgrading the aura would increase the range, but just in case I'll get three upgrades of this. Or you know what? I wanted to get it up to 25 armor anyway. Yeah, there's no way that's increasing the range, because we're only like 50 range short of getting every single tower and wall in here. Uh, which means if we care... Oh, we definitely need to get the aura back on the top left because this wall takes a beating every single night, whereas the bottom right tends to be pretty safe. So yeah, we'll destroy these mills, <laughs> move it back. Sucks, wasted a lot of resources on that, but I'd still rather have the armor on more than less. Oh, come on, what a terrible timing. Okay, well, now we just have no armor at all because the game decided it was a good time to eat 50 chickens. I don't think that'll be problematic, though. We do have uh, so many healers that we should be fine for a knight with no armor. Research complete. Yeah, right now these are at 2750, so I guess for just that satisfaction, I'll get a couple more building health upgrades Research to get it complete. over 3000. There we go. 3050 HP. Okay, one more sheep to go, and then we can get a mana well. There we are. Right Job's done. And then... What do we want to do? Do we rebuild these farms again? I'll be wasting so much wood, I don't think we do. What do we put there instead? Could put a couple healers there. 
<laughs> Seems like a bad choice. Yeah, we're so close to the end that wasting another 1,200 wood on the farm so only maybe net us like 500 gold. So. Uh, yeah. Actually, I guess we can squeeze in two towers there. That's fine. So we can either put in two towers or two healers. I feel like the towers are slightly more impactful. Yeah, these towers are pretty unlikely to ever get upgraded, just because, let's say it's a 5% chance, just this specific tower getting 20-ish kills is just not likely at all. Another legendary blade dropped, which is the flame blade, so we'll keep an eye out for legendary armor once again. Yeah. Does not appear to be any on the ground at the moment. Okay, 12,000 gold, let's get some more damage. Research complete. Research complete. Research complete. Yes, my lord. Uh, yeah. I'll we'll get farming up to level Research 50 just complete. so it ends on a nice number. Research In reality, complete. I don't think this is going to make a difference. I guess we can import a Research little bit of wood complete. here. Just get that uh, upgrade Research finished. Complete. Yeah. Converting your gold into wood is some, like, it's an acceptable choice up until you reach the, uh, point where it's now you're spending more than 100 gold for 100 wood, and at that point it's just too inefficient to even bother. Yeah, we do get a lot of obese sheep now that we're up to level 50 farming, which is what you'd hope for. Well, I guess something that I didn't show off is you can purchase a pack horse, which can hold items for you, but it uses a five food supply, so I never bother. The concept of the pack horse, I believe, is that you could use that to go to the merchant instead of walking there yourself. But since the items at the merchant aren't particularly required, I usually never end up using it. Yeah. Like, I guess if we really wanted to be on top of it, we could have uh, used that to purchase like 15 extra inks, but yeah, definitely no need for that. Okay, we're going to need to get another armor for it. Since these are all master archers, they definitely cannot be replaced. Which means, yeah. So we'll take out this lumber mill. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And then, once it's uh, the next day, we will put up another Earl Fora. Do we have room for anything here? We do not. But yeah, placing it on the outside shouldn't be any more dangerous than the rest of our buildings. Uh, they have 675 HP, which is the same, more or less the same as the healer. A little bit better. And the healers aren't dying, which means they shouldn't die either. Alright, two rounds remain before we reach the final boss. Which is, of course, just another demon level, so shouldn't pose any problems. Okay, Manuel. Off I go, defense Paladin. Inventory is full. Yeah, because the Defense Paladin is more expensive, I'm placing it on the interior Job side. Job's done. Yes, me lord. Inventory is full. All right. Also, I guess, yeah, I have a lot of gold coins to pick up. Off I go, then. Inventory is yes, full. Me lord. Let's go ahead and upgrade these soldiers into knights. Complete. Right. Inventory is full. Inventory right. is full. Yes, my lord. 
Upgrade, upgrade, hmm. I mean, it is objectively better to have a knight here Zion. than a sturdy wall. I'm just thinking, though, that right could to. split the aggro a little bit. Your honor. Actually, that's fine. Yeah, we can do that. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. I think I got all of the uh, currency drops, so we can go ahead and blink back in. Our town is under siege. Yep. Archer range is now up to level 40, bringing them to 2300 attack range. Let's see if this can attack the top raid. Honestly, I couldn't really tell there. Maybe? <laughs> Seems like it might be a hair short. We might need more like 3,000 range for that, but we don't have the money to bring it to that point, so our final few upgrades will be going into damage. Yeah, it looks like we also have enough spare for one health upgrade. Yeah, that's probably better than putting it into more sheep upgrades. I wonder, if we double click this, will it pull up all the obese sheep? Nice. That makes that a little simpler. Enemies are up to 1300 HP, which means we are 5 shotting them. Which is right around the minimum amount of damage that we want, so we're on pace. And the final boss, we probably have at least 1500 then. So that'd still be a five shot as well. Yeah, for reference, I think if we were playing this on easiest difficulty, which is what I played on in my uh, previous video, the final boss would have something like 800. So it's actually, hmm. yeah. So when you play on farmer god difficulty, the units get 70% more HP and I think when you play on easiest, it must be reduced, which should mean that... I mean, you could calculate this, but I don't really feel like doing precise math. But yeah, <laughs> I think it's around 8-ish, 100. Do not fear. Command me. Yeah. So with our 25 armor aura, we have 65% damage reduction on the knight, which means its effective HP is somewhere in the ballpark of... Five-ish thousand. And then you pair that with the healers, which all restore 600. I guess we do actually need slightly more healing upgrades. We'll get another two. Let's go pick up the gold. Right-o. All right. And yeah, with that, we get it up to 640, which is once again 5 heals, brings a single wall from minimum to full. We have about two minutes. I'm not planning on getting more archer upgrades. Eh, we'll do building health. I was thinking about maybe getting the farming upgrade to squeeze out a couple more fat sheep, which would mean another damage upgrade or two, but yeah. It's just not. See, I don't the problem is I don't know how frequently the sheep upgrade to know if that would actually be worth it. And I don't know what each upgrade really does, so that makes it even harder to decide. And yeah, as I had mentioned earlier, the final wave will last for five minutes, so we still have another six minutes of game left. 
Right. Inventory is full. Right -o. Inventory is full. What okay. ails you? Yes, my lord. Inventory No is point full. in picking up the flame blade, but there right might be some miscellaneous items here that could be better than what we have. At this point, we can drop the scroll of speed. Right -o. Could pick that, uh... Ring yes, of Evasion up that I dropped a long time ago, right. but I don't think that's necessary. We'll pick up the Advanced Armor for 150 oh, life. And what else? Right 150 life is better than 50, so we can grab one more Advanced All Armor. Right. And a couple of Greater Damage bonuses yes, to get some more will. Dragon Armor. Off I go then. Okay. All right. With that... Gets us 450 HP, a little bit of extra armor, so our villagers at 61% reduction. Not nearly as good as it could be, but not bad. Yeah. So now we'll see if we die a single time to the final boss. Our town is under siege. Our are under attack. Hmm. I guess our final points here, yeah, we can just split it into the attack speed upgrade and range. Actually, a little bit longer than five minutes. I think that was 330 seconds. So, five and a half minutes. If our walls do get dangerously low and they end up dying, then we can always use our emergency and vulnerability. But I think our healers are coming off cooldown fast enough that that shouldn't be an issue. This is Lowy Pox a sheep. Alright, I guess we can go invulnerable now for fun. Hopefully we don't get instantly stunned. Which means, uh, the, uh, because invulnerability does not affect living units, they're just going around and killing all my sheep right now. Seems like a couple of things have died. Oh, you know what might have just happened? No, never mind. I was going to say it's possible that the tree got killed here, and it did, but I had walled that off earlier, so it's not a big deal. Hmm. Actually, it would be good to get an additional wall up if we can. Just uh, so that they aren't able to hit a tower. We're, uh, yeah, we're a long way away food-wise, so we'll just blink back in. Are any of our walls at risk of dying? I guess we can upgrade all of our walls now. Oh, never mind. These are actually still scrappy walls. Actually, completely forgot about that. I had just assumed I had made those the better walls by this point. Okay, 200 seconds to go. I don't think we've lost a single knight yet. Although, admittedly, it is extremely hard to tell. Oh yeah, let's take a look at the enemy. He has 1700 HP, which means this is in fact taking 6 hits. Yeah, that'd require about 400 damage to get that back in the 5 hit range. Well, maybe more like 375. We're not that far off. Okay, 160 seconds to go. <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing that uh, they really like to prioritize the knights. Uh, if they wanted to, they could just walk through here and start attacking the archers, which would be a little annoying. Also, just amusingly, because this round is so long, we're in fact able to use our invulnerability spell twice, but I'm not going to do that because that would end up most likely resulting in them pathing around and uh, actually you know what they couldn't get through because these master archers would be invulnerable. But I feel like it still put me in greater danger than it would help. Seconds remaining. 
Once we reach the 40 second remaining mark, even if we somehow died, we would revive six times, so it's pretty much impossible for us to lose. But yeah, our walls aren't falling, our towers are killing fast enough. This is in the bag. And that's with a lot of our walls being scrappy. But yeah, 245 damage means that if your peasant does get attacked, he'll die pretty quickly. I guess one thing I'll explain here right at the end is at the start of the game I selected the Lumberjack. You can also start, uh, select the Ranger. I, I don't remember what he's called. But yeah, the Ranger allows you to use a ranged attack instead, and you get multi-shot. But uh, for killing bulk units, Cleave is a bit better. But yeah, technically... If you were the ranger, you'd be a little more useful than the lumberjack at this phase of the game, but since we don't really need to be attacking with our builder anyway, then that does not make a difference. And 20 seconds remain, it is now guaranteed impossible for us to lose. And yeah, for fun, we'll go ahead and go invulnerable one more time, see if we get instantly meteored. And there we go. So that's the game. It's, yeah, this is the maximum difficulty. I uh, completed on solo, of course. And really, the game does not get that much harder once you get the general flow of it down. Of course, if we were playing on easy with this strategy, it would be trivially easy. But seeing as how it wasn't very hard on the maximum, then, yeah, it doesn't make too big of a difference. So, yeah, Baron's TD. It's a pretty fun game. I learned how to beat this all myself, and ended up, uh, after the end of my last video, I had got the general gist of this strategy and was able to beat it on my very next attempt, and took a couple more refinements in the early game to be able to figure out how to beat it on god farmer mode, but yeah. All in all, really fun process. I recommend this game to anyone who's looking for a new base survival game. It has a similar-ish vibe to Infection Attack. I think... Yeah, just by definition, this game is a little bit easier because it's soloable. But, uh, yeah. As far as I know, Infection Attack is not soloable on extreme difficulty. But I'll have to look into that again. Uh, but, yeah, when I tried it, uh, like a year or, or several years ago, it was very hard. And nowadays, Infection Attack just crashes, which is unfortunate. But, yeah. So, I'm going to wait another 40 seconds here to show off round 31. And yeah, so since it's cleared up, we can see how many walls died. Looks like we had one wall die here, one healer, and then a couple of our scrappy walls. So we can actually continue to uh, make new walls with our builder. The only thing we can't do is move the screen. And for some reason, we're getting chickens. I, I guess those must just have never been killed. I don't know how we still have chickens. And I'm not sure if the game just keeps going on like normal at this point. Honestly, I would just suspect that it does. This wave should have around 1900 HP. And, uh, yeah, should just be a little bit stronger than that boss was. Here it is. Units have 1700. So it's, in fact, a little bit weaker than the boss wave. Which, of course, means we'll be fine. Um, I don't know how many secret rounds there are, but I don't really have any interest in figuring it out. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.